Hello, my name is Sir Love, and welcome back to Phase 6, your source for music, motivation, business, and support. Now, today we're going to be talking about a topic that's been close to a lot of people. A lot of people ask me to talk about this. They all want to know, what's the difference between major and independent record companies? So I'm going to lay everything out non-biased. I'm going to keep it 100. I'm going to tell you both sides of the coin. So if you're considering going one of the other routes, this is going to be very helpful for you. If you just don't know the difference, this is going to be very helpful for you. we got a good show, so I want you guys to stay locked in. Phase 6, let's get it. Come on to face it, if you need some marketing motivation, you can learn to transform your life and build your own empire, yeah. with Sir Love. Real talk, no trace, yeah. real talk, no trace, yeah. real talk, no trace, yeah. real talk, I said real talk, I said real talk, no trace, yeah. real talk, no trace, yeah. real talk, no trace. All right, so let's jump right into it. So I figured I want to talk about the underdog, but I know everybody really wants to know about the majors. So we're going to start off with the majors, and then we're going to go into the underdog. All right, so what do we know about majors? All right, well, the first thing you got to understand is there's three major record companies right now. You have Universal, you have Sony, and you have Warner. They used to be four EMI, but it got purchased, and so now there's only three. Now, a lot of people go, wow, I thought there were more than that, but there's really only three. They call them the big three because it was a time period in music not too long ago when all, everything was in disarray, people were downloading records and not buying albums and labels were losing money and so labels started folding and closing and merging and getting purchased and at the end of the slaughter there was only three le there was only four left standing and now there's only three left standing so those are the three major record labels universal warner and sony okay everything else that you know about from def jam to rca to epic uh, all Atlantic, um, Arista, all these record labels that, that you may be interested in, Capital, uh, they're all signed up under the umbrella of one of those three companies. Um, so that's something you got to keep in mind. All right, the next thing you need to know about majors is there's a lot of misconceptions about major record labels. A lot of people feel like when you sign to a major record label, you're automatically going to be rich, right? This is a misconception that we just got to poof, pop, get it out your head, right? Let's compare it to this. Think about sports or the NBA, NFL, or anything like that, right? You sign with the company. If you're in the first round, if you're a first round pick, you might get a good contract, might get some good money, you know, starting off. But it doesn't guarantee that you're always going to start. If you're a first round pick for a team that already has an amazing starter in your position, you may not start. You could sit on the bench the whole year. You may not get on. Um, and your contract may not be as lucrative, especially if you get signed and you're not a first round pick. You know, what if it's the NFL? They got seven rounds. You get picked number six, number seven. Your contract isn't really necessarily going to make you rich overnight. Then in addition to that, every initial contract is really used to get your product out there to budget and make you a star over time, right? It's a loan. The money that you receive is an investment into your business. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're a star overnight. Another misconception with major record labels is that if you go into the situation, you're going to get robbed. Like, they're just out to get you, you know? Like, like you're at the ATM machine, and these guys are the boogeyman in the corner with the pistols ready to take, ready to take you out. Like, it's, it's not that type of situation, right? Um, yes, it's true that a lot of people do get screwed, but most of the time, um, a lot of those uh, people that do get screwed, they're getting screwed by the middlemen, the managers, the publishing companies, the producers, the writers, the, uh, the production companies, and different people that they sign with before they even get to their major deal situation. On top of that, no matter if you go major or independent, or if you're working in any business, period, there's always going to be sharks and snakes out there that are trying to take what you have. So you always got to be aware, and you always got to be smart. Just because you're going to a major, it does not increase your likelihood of getting robbed. It does increase your likelihood of dealing with people that know a lot so they know how to rob so your defenses should be up when you're dealing with a more skilled individual versus you dealing with someone that may not be as experienced but then again you have record companies like big machine records which is the biggest independent company in the world and they're very well versed in the music and signing with them has got to be the equivalent to signing to a major right because they have all the same skill sets doesn't mean they're bad people. I don't think big major labels are bad people, but bad people exist everywhere and you have to watch out for them. There's a lot of good ones out there. All right. In addition, a lot of people also feel like the last misconception we're going to talk about, they're going to be a star overnight. Look, we just talked about it. You just got drafted to a new team. Hello, you, you're wearing the jersey. Yo, I'm with Interscope. What? I'm signed. Okay, great. Now what? You're not necessarily a star overnight. You have to put in work to make yourself a star. Most of the people in sports that become gigantic stars were gigantic stars before they got to that major, uh, major level. 
right? So that brings me to my next point. What does the uh, major record label do? Let's put it in perspective. Really, they're just a bank, right? If you go to your Bank of America, Wells Fargo, whoever you bank with right now, and you tell them, hey, I want to take out a business loan to start uh, promoting my album, they may look at you crazy. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to want a full business plan. They're going to really want to understand how you're doing. And for the most part, it's going to be really difficult to get. So record labels really are banks. They give artists loans to make their dreams come true. So if you're an artist and you're trying to make your dreams come true, you don't have money, this is the place that you go. And this is why so many people want to go to record labels because, I mean, we're artists. It's the music industry. You know, it's hard to make money in this field, all right? So when you go to the bank, what does the bank offer to you outside of this loan, right? That's a good question. Well, if you go to your regular bank, they have services, right? I can go to my Wells Fargo. They have ATM services. They have checking services. They have the app. They have all these different services that they offer. In addition, they also have services that I don't have access to unless I have a business account with them or I make a certain amount of money. It's the same thing with the record label. They have different services they provide. Now, you may know some of these services as they may be able to help you get on television. They may be able to help you get on radio. They may be able to help you distribute your product in places that you normally couldn't or get more awareness worldwide or on other platforms that you normally don't have access to, strings that you can't quite pull. They may have the relationships to pull. And they do have these services. Do they offer those services to every single person signed? Eh, not really, because when they offer those services, it costs them money. Right. And they're only going to invest the additional money into people that they feel like are going to make a return on their investment. Right. And if it doesn't cost them money, sometimes it costs them time. Um, a lot of things are relationships. So you're not necessarily guaranteed all the services, but going to the bank, you're going to get some standard services. We all can agree that we all have access to the ATM machines and we can all use our uh, apps from our phone. Right. So there's things you're going to get guaranteed. Next, uh, another big thing that people are talking about right now when it comes to major record labels is the 360 deal, right? It was the thing that had artists up in arms years ago, and it really makes sense. You know, the labels had to respond to the fact that albums aren't selling, and if they don't figure out a new way to create income, then they're going to dissolve, and there'll be no such thing as major record labels at all. Um, and so what they did is they started, they noticed that uh, ticket sales have been increasing over the years while album sales have been plummeting. So what they said is, hey, we're making you stars, we're making you famous, we're going to do our job to put you on a platform so that everybody knows who you are. And in exchange, we want to get a percentage of all the other money that you're making around you. So that's your sponsorships, your, your role money, your tours, your merchandise. Is it fair? It really just depends on how much uh, the record label is doing to help you in those situations. How how much awareness are they bringing to you? Uh, would you sell the same amount of merchandise if they were not involved in your project? Um, all of these are subjective and on an artist to artist situation. So you really cannot say whether it's fair or not fair, but that's the essence of a 360 deal. All right. Now, the last thing that I like to talk about is the biggest advantage of being with a major record label is scale. Right. When you're with a major record label, these are, you know, you can immediately have the opportunity to go from talking to a few thousand people to millions of people. Right. These are the opportunities that are in front of you. Most of the greats and the legends that you think about when you close your eyes and say, man, I want to be a star. I want to be this person. A lot of the times those people were signed to majors and those majors were able to put that machine behind the power behind them to really scale what they were doing. All right. Do you need them to be successful? No. But will it help you? Yes. Let's think about this. Ed Sheeran. Right. Ed Sheeran was doing his thing before he signed to major record label. He had various EPs out. They were winning. He was his album. One of his EPs was number two on the iTunes charts. Uh, he was uh, getting plays on Radio One right here in the U.S. and One Extra, which is the same or the equivalent to Radio One in the U.K. I mean, he, my man's getting spins. He's getting publishing. He's getting licenses. He's getting money. He doesn't need the record company. Why is he signing with them? Because there's still a level of scale that you can't necessarily do uh, all the time on your own as an independent. And when he signed, he was then able to he, he sign with a company here in America. He signed with a different company um, in Europe. And between those two companies, he was really able to get in the nooks and crannies of these different regions and increase his brand, increase his awareness, and really get himself out there. And that's the reason why a lot of us know who he is today. So that's major. Next, we're about to hop into independent. 
feel free to reach out to me on the website. There's a section for uh, questions and answers. Uh, if you have any questions, send it to me, face6.com. Uh, I don't know everything, but I know a lot about a little and a little about a lot. And if you guys rock with me, I promise you one thing, that I'm going to give you everything that I got. So y'all stay tuned. Y'all be in. This is Phase 6, Major versus Independent. Let's go. Real talk, no trace. Real talk, no trace. Real talk, no trace. Real talk, I said real talk, I said real talk, no trace. Real talk, no trace. Real talk, no trace.